please state your name. Bob Anderson Young. And um, how are you related to James Craig Anderson? He was my brother. He was my brother. James Craig Anderson lived in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, he worked at the Nissan plant north of town. He sang tenor in his church choir. He kept a garden. He had a partner of 17 years. Together they were raising a young member of their extended family. Craig Anderson was loved and cherished by his family. He was stylish. He was funny. Uh, and he was just going about his life in Jackson, Mississippi. Just before dawn on June 26, 2011, a group of white kids from the next town over uh, drove into Jackson and they spotted Craig Anderson in a hotel parking lot. The kids had driven into Jackson specifically to look for black people who they could harass and beat and terrorize until their victims begged for their lives. They had done this before. They had done this a lot. They'd been doing this kind of thing for months. A group of half a dozen kids, sometimes more, they'd drive from their majority white county in Mississippi into majority black Jackson, the state capital. The white kids called Jackson Jeffrica. Uh, and they basically made a sport of it. Get a group together, get drunk, drive into Jackson, specifically to find black people to attack. They threw beer bottles at people. They beat people with their fists. They used slingshots. The first kids to spot Craig Anderson that night, they kept him in that parking lot of the hotel until the rest of their friends could arrive. And then they jumped him. They beat him with their fists, they screamed at him and called him names. One of the teenagers was driving a big Ford truck, a big F-250. He gunned the engine, took aim, and he ran Craig Anderson over with his truck. The kid driving the truck then called his friends who were in a second vehicle and he laughed and he told them that he, quote, just ran that N-word over. And then he drove off. And James Craig Anderson died. He died of his injuries in a local hospital. He was attacked by those high school kids specifically and apparently only because of his race. And the attack included running him over with a truck. And now he was dead at age 47. That was in June 2011 in a modern day state capital. Less than two years before that murder, President Obama had signed an expanded federal hate crimes bill into law. The bill was called the Shepard Bird Act after Matthew Shepard and James Bird. Matthew Shepard was killed in Wyoming in 1998. He was beaten, tortured, and tied to a fence and left to die because he was gay. Uh, James Bird was killed in Texas that same year. He was chained to a truck bumper and dragged for a mile and a half down a road by white supremacists. A decade after those deaths, when President Obama signed the expanded federal hate crimes law named in their honor, it was news partly because that law added sexual minorities to the list of protected classes for hate crimes. But that law also made one other really important change about prosecuting these kinds of crimes. Previously, for the federal government to get involved to help prosecute a case like this, the victim would have had to be doing something or trying to do something that had specific federal protection, something like voting or going to school. The new law closed that loophole, allowing federal prosecutors to step in when, say, a man was attacked in a hotel parking lot for no reason other than the fact that he was black. And because of that new law, because of the closing of that loophole, that killing in that hotel parking lot in Jackson in 2011, that became a federal case. The killing of Craig Anderson became the first time the US Justice Department used that new law in a murder case. And listen to what happened. First of all, the driver of the truck that ran Craig Anderson down, the, the guy who said, I ran that N-word over. First, he pleaded guilty in state court. 19 years old, his name is Daryl Dudman. He received two life sentences in state court. Then the next day, he pleaded guilty in federal court as well. That next day in federal court, two more suspects in the case also pled guilty alongside Daryl Dudman. And since then, even though the local community has sometimes been impatient with the pace of the investigation, Look at what has happened since then. Prosecutors have continued to reel in suspects in that murder of Craig Anderson and in the string of racist assaults against other black people that led up to Craig Anderson's murder. As the case developed, prosecutors believed that 10 separate people had had some level of involvement in, this, in these attacks. Deadman and the other two who pled guilty in federal court, that gives you three of the 10. Then they got two more suspects to plead guilty in federal court. That was December 2012. So of the 10, that's five down, five to go. The following month, January 2013, they got guilty plea number six. That leaves four more still to go. And those final four indictments were handed up this summer, and that led to two more guilty pleas last month. Then they were up to eight out of 10. And now, in federal court in Jackson, Mississippi, the final two suspects have just pleaded guilty. 
standing before the first African-American federal judge appointed in that state. They described what happened that night. These are the last two suspects. The local paper reports that one of them wept openly as he recalled the earlier assaults and then the scene at the hotel parking lot when Craig Anderson died. When the judge asked this young man what he did while his friends beat Craig Anderson, the young man whispered his reply, I watched. From the beginning, James Craig Anderson's family had asked for the prosecution of everyone involved. 10 out of 10 using the new Shepard Bird Hate Crimes Act. Federal prosecutors got them all. Got 10 out of 10. At the first sentencing, the victim's sister thanked local and federal authorities. She called for justice and she said she prays for peace. Because of my brother, James Craig Anderson, our lives were richer with love, respect, and the love of God. We, the Anderson family, are praying for racial conciliation, not only in Mississippi, but all over this land and country. We are praying for the defendant, Deadman, and his family, that they find peace. Some of the old civil rights cases took decades to solve and prosecute. A lot of them have never been prosecuted at all, even to this day. But in this one case, with this new law, they finished what they started, 10 of 10. Today, this afternoon on Martin Luther King Day, we got the announcement, finally, of federal sentencing dates next month for all of them. They're looking at maximum sentences ranging from a possible five years for one defendant to life in prison. If the point of holidays is to mark change over time, to have a commemorative event each year that marks time, then with this case, and this verdict, and these potential huge sentences, we can see that our nation has at least shifted in how we deal with these crimes, right? We are not past the days of racial violence, even on a grand and terrible scale. But neither are we lost in the days when racial violence inevitably went unprosecuted and unpunished. That much, at least, here has changed. Now it's time for the last word with Lawrence O'Donnell. Good evening, Lawrence. Good evening, Rachel. Thank you for that important and moving report. Thank, Thank you. you.